All right, I'm going over to Banks Tech. This is where we assemble all the Banks military engines, which are based on the, currently on the L5P, but also we've got about 1,000 LML still to build. I want to show you something here. This is our cooling tower uh, for the process water on the dyno and also uh, for engine coolant, all of those sorts of uses. Charge air cooling, we use liquid. But what I want you to see, instead of threading stuff together, we built this like it's kind of a Harley exhaust system, you know? This would be the exhaust out of the engine, there's your pipes going to the back of the bike, but you can tell I'm in the custom exhaust system and tubing business here. So when we go in the dyno cell here, this one has a military engine on the dyno. We're wiring plumbing, we're getting ready to test this thing. We've, the guys have been working on this for quite a while. So I'm gonna show you some of the, you know, this is a dyno assembled and put in this room by hot rodders. This is a work in process in here. There's some cool stuff that we do. Uh, first of all, let me show you the absorber right here. This is a Taylor, 400 kilowatt or 536 horsepower absorber. Uh, it'll go to 8,000 RPM. So if we want to run something a little racy, uh, boy, I'm, as long as we don't go over about 550 horsepower, we're fine. You might say, oh, that's not a lot of horsepower. Well, in a military vehicle the size of the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, or JLTV, that's a lot of horsepower. Um, the JLTV is 70% faster than any military vehicle in its weight class has ever been. So, and it's not only faster, it's easier on the people inside. It's got about 21 inches of wheel treble. It's a Baja Trophy truck. So we've just got a whole bunch of them to build over, over the next eight years or so. And we're trying to keep up with it. That's why we're adding engine dynos. Let me walk you through some of what's going on here. Down in here, this is our charge air cooler. This guy right down here. So you see there's boost lines going into and out of these larger stainless lines. That's air. And, and there's water going through it. And it's got a, it, this is a liquid coupled uh, charge air cooler. So this thing will pull a lot of heat. Everything's instrumented so that there's a complete record on every engine we test, a digital record on every engine that we test. Not just the power, torque, and things of that nature, but the performance of all the systems. What were the temperatures, the water going in and out, the air going into the engine, the exhaust coming out, those sorts of things. So that if there's ever any uh, issue in the field that's traceable to the build of the engines, we'd be able to window out just which ones. Uh, that traceability is very important. What do we do here that's kind of clever? Well, we run the engines in on carts that we developed, which dock right here. You see the back end of the engine, and we can photograph this. The back end of the engine is bolted to this plate, which is part of this cart, the unpainted cart. Uh, the cart rolls in, and it dowel pins to the gray chassis of the dyno. This is the cooling jacket water, you know, the, what you would call the radiator in a truck. This is the expansion tank here. And what we've got down on the floor here is a pump that allows us to fill the engine once it comes in here. This pump system here draws coolant out of this tank right here, fills the engine, we then valve it off, and now you're on the tank here. We pre-pressurize the, the pressure, this, this is like the upper tank in a radiator. We pressurize, and then here's the system to pressurize this to upper operating pressure like you'd have in the truck with the pressure cap. 
but we build the pressure before we even start the engine. We run the dyno test, the 22 minute test, then we pump the engine out back into the tank and the engine is ready to, to ship. Coolant's out of it. Back here is the fuel system. This is the fuel pump. This is electronically managed in terms of, of pump speed, uh, fuel filtration. And this is the fuel, what we call the day tank. This is the tank that pulls out of the tank farm outside and gives you fuel in the cell. Coolant, the fuel system, coolant pump system, and the starter, we, we might want to look at the starter here because this is kind of serious. We don't have a ring gear. We just have this big spur gear driven by the pinion on the starter give you some idea how big the starter is just you know uh, what it does is it spins up the dyno the shaft goes through the dyno the drive shaft turns the engine and fires the engine so this is the starter for the engine right here the exhaust is overhead the exhaust goes up and you can see it going out through the wall here through this insulated opening this is what we call the trellis we we built the chassis so that the twist between the engine cart and the dyno chassis uh, there's no twist whatsoever the, we have large dowel pins that dowel this to this so it's in perfect alignment and these little guides kind of slide it in as the guy rolls the the cart into the room there you go this has been going on for quite a while, but this, this is how we build a hot rod dyno in Southern California. Hope you guys enjoyed this.